Hey, church family, it's my turn to lead our weekly devotional, and I'm really glad that you're here with me today. You know, I started in the ministry when I was 19 years old, and I began working at a small Baptist church in Noble, Oklahoma, where I grew up, and I spent about four and a half years there uh, serving and, and leading the youth group. And when I look back upon those days that I had there, they are great days. A lot of fond memories there, a lot of fun. I was very experienced. I was I was young, probably a little naive, a little ambitious, I guess you could probably say. But I look back upon that, and God really did bless that time in my life. In fact, I, I know um, it was a huge part of um, just blessings for me because as I look at my life today, I have a lot of friendships and relationships that are still going on today because of those years that I spent uh, serving at that church. In fact, a couple of our uh, church members we have at Cross Church right now were in my youth group uh, <laughs> a couple of decades ago. So pretty cool stuff. But those days were great and I um, I adore them. But one of my dimmest, um, not so bright moments happened when I was the youth pastor um, at this church. We had um, a big event that was happening at the Lloyd Noble Center at the University of Oklahoma and thousands of students were going to come and, and worship and hear preaching uh, on a Friday night. And we were going to be there and we showed up with our 40 kids. We brought our two uh, church vans and we had some adults drive their cars as well. And so we had a great group. We drove over there, had an outstanding night. And then the plan was we we're going to extend the evening by uh, heading back to our church and just having food and games and and just spending some more time together. And so we did just that. Got back to the church. It's well into the evening. And we're there um, just um, just having an awesome time, right? And I'm in this particular room in the church. And you can see the parking lot from that room. And when I'm uh, you know, in there just talking to people, I, I see a car pull up. And it just catches my attention. And I'm, I look out the window. And someone gets out of the car. And they walk to the side of the church. And they enter a door that goes directly into a hallway in the church. And so I stepped out of that room and I looked down the hallway. And as soon as I looked and saw who was standing there, my heart just dropped. And I promise you that every ounce of blood that I had in my face just completely sank. And I could feel my heart just pounding. And I just felt incredibly terrible because this young man looks at me and he says, you forgot me. You left me. And I will never forget it. I will never forget that moment of that young man saying, you forgot me. You left me. And this young man, I don't even you know, really remember the details uh, a whole lot, but I just know it was the early 2000s and he didn't have a cell phone. And Somehow, some way, he had to get a hold of somebody to come pick him up at the Lloyd Noble because his youth pastor forgot him and left him, you know. And and then to make it even worse, we didn't even notice. We didn't even notice that he was missing. It was t terrible. Please don't, please don't judge me because God is, <laughs> God has forgiven me. And and the kid was cool. I mean, his parents dropped him back off the church. So what does that tell you <laughs> about our relationship? But anyway, we we just uh, we all felt horrible. The whole. Um, all my youth leaders and I just I didn't know that I could ever really make it up to him but I just wondered often um, how he must have felt in those uh, few hours that he was there and didn't have a ride and couldn't get a hold of didn't know where we were and, and and had no really way to contact anybody and what a horrible feeling you know and I don't think there's probably anything on this uh, earth that could be um, just more uh, detrimental to your heart than to be forgotten. You know, if you've ever had your birthday forgotten or, you know, um, you know, hopefully this never happens to you, you forget your anniversary or, or something important, a date that's come around. I mean, it's a, it's a really horrible feeling to be forgotten. And so that's what I want to talk about today with you all. It's just the power of remembering the power of um, making sure we don't forget things that God has already done for us and how God has already proven himself to us. Because I believe that, you know, that feeling that we might have about being forgotten is probably not very far off of what God might feel when he sees that we forget who he is and we don't 
consider the works that he's done for us. And we just kind of let it slip out of our mind about um, just what he's already done for us and how much love he's shown for us. So I want to read to you uh, two verses uh, quickly out of Psalm chapter uh, 77, Psalm 77 verses um, 11 and 12 here. It says this, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and I will meditate on all your mighty deeds. I love those two verses. Remember and consider. And so I just want to encourage you today to just remember what God has done for you in the past. Maybe even write it down. Maybe even uh, send yourself a text message. Maybe tell somebody, but don't forget what God has brought you out of. Because I believe that if we remember and consider and we meditate on what God has already done, it really gives us confidence and faith and what he's going to do for us in the future. Remembering is a powerful, powerful thing. And I, I would say that there's probably uh, many of you that are watching this right now. And even when you think about those times in your life where you're remembering what God has done or what he's brought you through, even in those darker moments, even those, those moments when things didn't seem like they were going to be okay, um, you can maybe look back upon it now and just see how God navigated you through all of it and walked with you through your dark valley or um, your season of sorrow that you might have had. Remembering what God has done is a powerful, powerful thing. I want to also um, talk about remembering in the sense of remembering why we do what we do. Why we um, come together as a church? Why do we watch these devotionals? Why do we get into God's word? Why do we worship? Why do we come to family night on Wednesday? Why do we do all the things that we do? Remembering your why and remembering the core of, of who we are and what we're about is really, really important. And so I want to share a quick story with you about uh, the importance of remembering why we do what we do. A few weeks ago, we had a brand new couple come and visit us at church. And my wife and I got to spend some time with them afterwards, talking with them about their life and got to know them, heard their faith story, where they went to church previously, their, their, when they got married, just learned about them. And we, we shared our story with them. But one of the things that they said to us after being a part of our worship service one time was that the part of our worship service that was the most powerful was the end when we prayed for one another. And both of them said they were overwhelmed by seeing us lay hands upon one another and pray for each other, that it just impacted them deeply, that it really was something that they needed to see. They needed to see people loving other people. The gentleman even told me that he had tears filling up in his eyes, watching us surround each other in prayer. And I thought about that comment and it really did stick with me for uh, the week after because we all need to remember why we do that. Why do we close our service that way? Well, because we want to love people through prayer. We want to cry out to the one that can help them. We want to intercede on their behalf. And, you know, I, mean, I know sometimes in our worship service, we can, you know, just do what we do. We, we sing a couple songs, we take communion, we hear the sermon, we pray, we go home. And, I don't ever want it to be like that for us. I don't ever want us to just do things for the sake of doing them. We got to remember why we do them. And so when a visitor comes into our church, it's an awesome thing because they can share with us what their experience was like. Because for those of us that have been there a long time, it's just what we do. It's part of our plan and our order and which we need to have a plan and we need to have order, but we can never, ever forget the why. Remember, consider why we do all the things that we do. We do it for the name and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, uh, love you so much. Thank you for your time today. Let's remember the things that God has done for us. Consider them, meditate on them, and then let's remember why we do all the things that we do as a church. We do it for his name and for his glory. Love you so much. Have a great day and go and be the church. Thanks.